is its home to Creative Assembly, creators of Total War. Hi, I'm Lou Nella, and I've invaded Creative Assembly to capture some important people to answer your questions about Total War Arena. First up, maps. I've just managed to fight through legions of Romans to get here into the HQ of Creative Assembly. We're going to talk about maps as I've managed to steal the world team and the art lead to be able to tell you and answer some of the very important questions about maps and the designs and spawn points. So let's go step by step. The order comes in. It's written on a piece of paper like you must create map for Germany or is it something different? Um. It's generally, I mean, it, it, it can sometimes be a case of uh, we, we need a map that can be placed in this position within the tiers uh, or just within like a particular culture. Um, other times it's just kind of a case of let's, let's come up with a new map that's fun and interesting. Yeah. It, it might be that we, want, we need a map to go within these tiers because we've got quite a lot on the high tier or the low tier and there's not really much in the mid or... So gameplay? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. The type yeah. of gameplay, we might want to concentrate on a certain type of gameplay. Like, art is not the initial thought, like, we need to have a really green map. It's very much gameplay related. Oh, okay, so they don't say, we need a hilly map and uh, make something gameplay from the hilly map. It's, it's usually, we need a simple map for, for beginners, or we need a complex map for the high tiers and artillery. So. Yeah. yeah, I mean, exactly, we, yeah. Yeah, we want every map to be readable right from the start, from when you first start playing it. But for example, with a, a lower tier map like, uh, like Thermopylae used to be, or you know, currently is, um, it's, it's quite an easy map to immediately understand. You know, you've got the, the hot gates themselves, which teach you that a bottleneck is a, a strategic kind of feature of the map. And then we have the flanks, so we teach immediately on that map the value in arena of flanking gameplay. Okay, on this subject, I have to say, this, this is the perfect time to talk about map tiers. What does this mean? So if I have a tier two units, I'm only going to see some maps. And if I have tier 10, I'm not going to see those maps anymore. I'm going to see other maps, or how does it work? There are some maps that you won't see when you first start playing the game. Then as you, as you do kind of progress up the tiers, then the maps effectively will be added to the pool that is available to you when you match so Added? Yeah. Not um, taken away. So you will always see those early maps again. Some of the the very earlier maps um, will kind of phase out as well once you get to higher tiers. It's like in World of Tanks, you don't see province at tier 10 because it would be mad because everyone just kill each other at the spawn. Yeah. But at the same time, you will see these maps again because as new commanders come out, new factions come out, you're going to be going back down to the lower tiers and you're going to be starting up again and you will get to see them again. Newbie friendly maps, line them up in front of each other in a big open field. Sounds easy enough, right? Um, yeah, no, well, no. <laughs> this is the, the Rubicon. <laughs> this, this, is, this is kind of so, uh, Rubicon initially started out as something aimed at a new kind of player base. Uh, this is something that's quite open, easy for people to understand, easy people can see. They have an army, they can see the base just over there, they're really close together. Um, we played it and turned out no one knew what to do. Um, <laughs> it was a massacre. It was wasn't a massacre. It? I think that's one of the good things about Rubicon. Like I remember playing it when we we first sort of introduced it, and it was very much like there was lots of players kind of going everywhere and kind of attacking everyone, and everyone was like, I don't know what direction this is. <laughs> like it's a it's fun, but it's quite difficult. Yeah. Um, and I think introducing kind of like these different elements around the map to kind of really break it up really helped. Yeah, and it's helped us as well in development of new lower tier maps, because we know now Absolutely, that at lower yeah. tiers we need to give a bit more guidance as to what players should do. And I think Capitoline Hill is a really good um, early tier map. Yeah, uh, that, that was the challenge. Yeah, the exactly. Map. I mean, yeah. it, it does support these real awesome mele melees in the middle of the map. It still has that, it still has that, you know, you can just pile in in your first few games in, in Total War Arena. But um, at the same time, we, we guide you into that and we give you some options, some clear options that you can follow. There must be a lot of challenges with an open map as well to make it look interesting. If it's just a field, well, if you put a tree there, it has to be cover. Right? It has to do something. With the maps, we want the story, we want the story element. We want the idea that you can, you're, you're playing on a battlefield that has history. We have two 
forces, whether it's made up of Greeks, Romans or barbarians. And we want the story in that map to kind of show, showcase that there's been a battle here before. Like what happened here? Like what type of fight happened? And then you see a kind of a trail of like things that's led up to this point. And that's kind of the thing that we want to introduce a lot more to. And so let's let's talk about something slightly different. It's definitely relevant, but it's it's slightly different. When you have a unit, you have a bubble around your unit, and that's where you can see. Now, if you're on high ground, do you get to see further? Is that how it works? Effectively, because there'll be fewer things between you and what you're trying to look at because you'll be above them. So you have yes. some real life, but yeah. does it work yeah. in the game? There's no artificial um, kind of extending of the vision range based no. on the height of your unit. It's more of a naturally by being higher up, there are less things obscuring mm. your view. So you have a better overall vision. Yeah, it's, um, it's a 3D calculation of where your vision can see. So, you know, if you're higher, you will see more but you won't necessarily have a, a longer view range. So you're actually tweaking the map when you're thinking about vision. Like you're saying, like, okay, yeah, so yeah. these units only have a hundred range, whatever number. And you're like, okay, so we need to bring that ridge line just a little bit closer because otherwise they can't see over it and it's going to be not very good. When you're playing the map and you're in an area of low vision because of what's around you and the, the layout of the map, you are worried, you're concerned because there could be people lying in wait for you to ambush you. But on the flip side of that, you've got players who are exploiting that and they are hiding in trees and they are waiting and they're sneaking around behind. So, you know, we, we want to support players who are sneaky, who can ambush, who can exploit the way that people can be distracted and not keep their awareness um, high and or have a team that's not scouting properly. And then they can make that decisive stroke that will win them the battle. Now, a lot of people will say, well, in other Total Wars, I can see from above, I can see from really far away. Uh, why is it different this time around? I mean, Rob touched on it earlier. It's, you know, Total War Arena is a, is a different experience to a normal Total War game. You know, Total War gives you kind of a lot more of those types of, uh, you know, ideas and play styles. But for us, we really want this idea of like claustrophobia in the towns, you know, and this kind of be very careful that if you go down the wrong road, that there's an ambush point there and you're going to get hit. And we want you to feel closer to the action. And, and that's one of the reasons why we've kind of kept the camera restraints there. Now, one last question. Spawn points. Now, before you stab me and, and, and run away, uh, I really want to get the answer. A lot of the community um, is a bit confused. Like, well, I know where I should be. Yeah. Like, I want that option. Like, I, the, the, the whole spawn area, I know that my uh, horses should be over there, my spearmen should be here. Yeah. Why have you taken that away from me? Okay, so, we know, it's a really, we know it's really important to how people start the maps out, and we know that supporting the way that people want to play the maps is, is really important. Spawn points are definitely coming back. Yeah. Okay, so you will be able to choose where to spawn um, on the battlefield. So it's a newbie protection sort of thing. The reason that it was removed was because we felt that there was a very uh, an overwhelming amount of information for new players when they first joined a battle. They were first required to pick units, pick commanders, then they went into battle and they were forced to choose a place to start. So if I'm new, I'm in my first like 10 battles Absolutely. or so. You will only play with people who are in that stage as well. But what happens when ev everyone's finished being a newbie? Total War Arena is a service and so we will look and we will review and we yeah, will exactly, adjust yeah, and, yeah. and that's the key, right? It's like if people are starting to get annoyed by certain things or like Life said, you know, he looks at metrics and the battle maps aren't really balanced, we will go back and we will fix. We will go back and adjust and we will raise the quality bar and that's the whole point. That, the whole mentality of Total War Arena is about service in the game and making sure people have the most fun they can. I hope I've gotten all the important answers on maps today. Stay tuned for more and I'll see you on the battlefield.